yes. So many mistakes. Yeah. I mean, a whole lot of mistakes. I was there. Usually you make a few, but this was a lot even for you. Thank you. I mean, really, what were you thinking? Well, I was distracted. Distracted? Yes, you see, there was this rabbit. Rabbit? Yes, a very large rabbit. Was he in a hurry? Yes, he was. Ooh, that rabbit! He owes me money, you know. Well, anyway, it all turned out all right in the end. I suppose. Didn't it? Why don't you let them decide? Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Ah, mistakes. Always there to humble, teach, and hopefully strengthen us. Mistakes are a part of the furniture redo process. There are just too many tiny variables to ever avoid them. But once in a while, you find yourself in some kind of bizarre mistake-making loop, always seeming to choose the wrong bottle to drink from tripping and stumbling from one mess to the next. And the question is, where? Where will this mistake-laden path lead you? I picked up this very blotchy Lane Cedar chest from a friendly young mom who explained she had had it for a while. And after painting it pink, had attempted to refinish it, but with her little ones, it was just proving to be too much. It had sat in the garage for a while. And so when I finally got it out and took a look at it, I saw immediately how rustic and rolling the wood on the outside was. I also realized it had a recalled lock. The lane chests from, I believe, 1912 to 1987 have locks that cannot be opened should some small person find themselves trapped inside a very dangerous situation, and so I knew I would need to address that. The cedar lining was in beautiful shape, the way cedar tends to be, except for just a few old pieces of tape. I did some further investigation and realized the chest had actually been spray painted pink, and that spray paint had gotten onto the hinges also, but overall, the chest was in great solid condition, and so I began to clean. I gave her a quick vacuum and scrubbed the outside with some Dawn soap and then gave the chest a good rinse. Then I decided it would be easier to work with the piece with that top off. So I removed it and came back and realized that pink spray paint was stuck into many of the grooves along that outside lower trim. So I used my surf prep to kind of clean out any larger globs. And then I removed the lock and the back hinges. I decided to fill the front corners with just a little bit of plastic wood, and then I got ready to prime. I have to tell you, I don't think I had ever seen such a blotchy finish on a piece. I had nicknamed this chest the Horda. Star Trek fans will know what I am talking about. And so once those front corners were all sanded and she was all primed, 
Wow, the piece looked so much better and you could really start to see her cute, chunky shape and also just how rustic and rolling that outer wood finish really was. Okay, so here was the plan. These three colors by Dixie Bell from left to right are Sandcastle, Deep Sea, and Stormy Seas. My plan was to do the base of the chest in that beautiful dark blue deep sea and then do a long horizontal blend with the other two colors, with the majority of the chest being in that nice warm neutral of Sandcastle. I thought that would be a lovely scene setter, so to speak, for these amazing Alice in Wonderland transfers by Dixie Bell. Here you can see how those colors are all within these transfers. So I began to apply deep sea all over the base of the chest, as well as the bottom trim and just a couple of inches up the sides as well. Now, if you have any experience blending, you may be thinking, hmm, I think I see her first big mistake, and you would be correct. Two of the three paints I am using are not Dixie Belle's basic chalk paint. They are from their Silk All-in-One line, and these paints contain both a primer and a top coat. Unlike basic chalk paint, they are not known for their blendability, which of course makes sense. Primer and top coat do not want to play with water. They want to settle down and stay right where they've landed, thank you very much. And who can blame them? That's their job, to lock things down and provide stability. None of this willy-nilly blending. The hilarious thing is, I know this, <laughs> but I just was sort of silly and thought, I'll just use a dry brush blending technique with the all-in-one paints and it will be fine. <clears throat> yes, it will just be fine. <laughs> well, a dry brush blending technique is is a real thing and it does work and you can do it with all-in-one paints, but it is really more appropriate for a small area, not the long expanses of this chest. So, okay, then I applied Sandcastle using my new Zebra two and a half inch brush over all of the rest of the chest and also the top. By the time I had finished, the first coat of Deep Sea was dry enough to add a second coat, and then I did a second coat in Sandcastle. After both of those two coats had dried, I added my transitional color, Stormy Seas, and overlapped those two other colors. And here you can see my big mistake number two. <laughs> These colors are very far apart from one another. Blending is so much easier when your colors are closely related, which also makes sense. And I knew this as well. I don't know, what can I say? I just, I had an idea and I, I just wanted to do it. I set myself up to start blending with a brush for each color of paint, as well as two blending brushes and some rags and a water mister. And then I started. So I have put this hot mess on super fast reel here because I think you can tell by now that this isn't going to end well. My plan to use a dry brush method but also use a little water because I had that middle layer of chalk paint was struggling, I will say, terribly. The thing is, I could not, of course, control the water well enough to keep it mostly away from the silk all-in-one. It's getting into that paint. The silk paint is getting annoyed with that. So after quite a while, uh, 
this was as good as I could get things. I decided to put a pin in all of that blending over there and move on to the top of the piece. I used this big, awesome stencil by Dixie Bell. It's called Morocco. And so I taped it down on one side and then trimmed up my chip brush so to make it a little bit easier to stencil with. And then using three chip brushes and three colors of paint, I did a stencil blending technique with Stormy Seas Deep Sea and that third color of paint is called Twilight Geranium by Fusion Mineral Paint. So when you do a blend like this, you work your brush up and down and you just kind of play with it, adding the different colors in whatever shapes and sizes you like. You can see I can even take a look under my stencil and see how it's going. The colors will blend into each other at the edges and it creates a really beautiful effect. I did one panel of the stencil and then scooched it over and started the second section making sure to line up those edges. This time I chose not to use the Twilight Geranium. I thought it looked really pretty but maybe wasn't going to jive with the overall look. I did the third panel and then I placed the top back onto the body of the chest and stood back and took a look. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> not only do I have some twilight geranium over there on the left side and nowhere else, but I had also miscalculated the size of the stencil and had about a half inch of unstenciled top. And also my blending is looking, well, slightly tragic. So I went to bed and slept on all of this and in the clear light of a new morning, decided to change directions a bit. I chose three colors that were much closer together. I refreshed the bottom layer of deep sea and then for the second color, I actually used this color I had by Melange called Silky Blue. Not only is this color closer to deep sea than Stormy Seas was, Melange Paints doesn't have a top coat in it, so it'll be a little bit easier to blend than the silk. As I added it, I did a kind of a quick little bit of blending. Then for our third color, I'm using Blueberry by Dixie Belle, which while not super close to Silky Blue, is obviously much closer than Sandcastle was. Also, it is a straight up chalk paint. And so to blend that line between Blueberry and Silky Blue, I am going to be able to use a little bit of water to help things along. So here you can see a close up. I'm adding some of that Silky Blue and then some Blueberry and giving those two colors a light misting. And then I use a totally separate brush that is dry and clean and I softly blend using swirls and just shallow diagonal strokes. You can see every so often I actually wipe the brush off so that it does not become overloaded with paint. I decided it would actually help me out a lot to blend those top two blues together, giving me actually a fourth color to use and so then I applied that over the line that joined them up. So occasionally I am using some diagonal strokes, but you can see I'm really trying to kind of keep my blend more shallow. And that's because I was actually wanting to create a very kind of striation effect, I guess is what I would call it. I knew that a true perfect ombre effect would be much more difficult to achieve. And so I'd already kind of decided to set myself up with some less pressure and go for more of this sort of moody backdrop or almost landscape effect.
I find that whenever I am trying to do any kind of artistic finish, especially if it has been a while since I've done that specific one, the more room I can give myself to let what I'm creating kind of emerge as I go and show itself without too many previous expectations, all the better. So I'm kind of going into a Bob Ross mindset here <laughs> and letting the paint take me on this blending journey. So because I had switched things up on the body, I now needed to tweak the top. I did a couple of layers of blueberry on the trim edge of that top, and then I gave the stencil a quick sanding with a 220 grit paper over my sanding pad. And after I wiped back any dust, I gave the top a light mist, and then applied a very light layer of blueberry wash all over that stencil. I wiped that back and let it dry as I came back to the cedar interior of the chest, cleaning up any little bits of paint with my surf prep sander and also refreshing the rest of the inside with the sander to just kind of release some of those cedar oils from the cedar lining. I let the paint on the body dry overnight so it would be completely dry and then it was finally time to start adding my stencils. I knew I wanted this largest one of Alice sitting in her chair with her little kitten to go right in the center of the chest and so I took a good look at it and then cut it out, lined it up again and then peeled the transfer off of the backing paper. I stuck it down very lightly, and then I actually stepped back and took a look from farther back and decided to reposition it. Now, this is a little bit dangerous, so be super careful if you do that, but it was just fine, and so I began to burnish it down with that stick that comes with the transfer. So you can see here, I am going slowly and carefully, taking my time and carefully keeping an eye on that transfer just to make sure that it is releasing from that paper and sealing to its new home, the surface of the chest. If anything looks like it's not releasing, I just lay the paper back down and use the transfer stick some more and it just comes right off. No problem. she is wow so fantastic <laughs> you can see I'm I'm excited <laughs> so okay after you affix your transfers you want to use a clean cloth or a rag and give them another good burnishing just to make sure they are really well stuck down and solid 
Then I got out all of the rest of the transfers and had a look. Wowza, like a kid in a candy store. Ooh, these transfers are so cool. They are a colorized version of the original illustrations by Sir John Tenniel, who was a political cartoonist of his time. Apparently, Lewis Carroll chose him because of his ability to draw in the grotesque style that Carroll needed for his tale. The most grotesque illustration is not among these transfers, the Jabberwocky, which is probably good because I might be too scared to work out in the garage by myself with that one on my mind. <laughs> Ooh. So about this time, I was starting to panic about which of these transfers to use and where exactly to place them. And so I was so happy when my eldest daughter, Franny, came out to give me a hand. She very smartly said, first of all, we should, of course, cut them all out. And then we put a piece of painter's tape on each of them and then began the epic transfer art design meeting. Different folks showed up at different times, suggestions were made, ideas cast about, options were considered. All the while we asked ourselves, what does it all mean? Are we trying to depict the storyline? Are we trying to express Carol's thematic idea of a world becoming increasingly unreliable? After all of my previous mistakes and the rather gargantuan blending efforts, I was feeling particularly nervous about placing transfers and then regretting it. But eventually we realized that we must keep moving forward down this twisty and bendy road and that the answer seemed to lie with... Like the rabbit. We're gonna place the rabbit. Good. Once the rabbit is placed, <laughs> then maybe we can make some more decisions. Yes, it was all about this rascal. <laughs> so we affixed him to the edge of the chest. After all, he is rushing off somewhere. And then it was like everything else just fell into place. Franny had more time to spare, so I was delighted to have some mother-daughter time together as we applied the transfers. If you have a large transfer job like this to do, what a fantastic thing to share in the fun of it with someone you love and kind of extra, extra special when that person used to be the little red-haired baby you read so many marvelous tales to, just like Alice in Wonderland. Here you can see that Franny is applying a transfer over and around the corner of the chest. They really are just so easy to work with. I wanted to try a layered effect with the transfers, so here I added some flowers first and then affixed the teapot over them. And here we have some wonderful bendy, wendy, timey-wimey. Oops, that's, that's something different, isn't it? <laughs> okay, time to do the final touches. So first I added a little bit of that missing stencil. Then always, always with dark paint, I need to do a few touch-ups. Ooh, there's that edge on the lid. And yes, I decided to paint the back and used an artist's brush at the edge so I didn't come anywhere near that blend. Now a quick sand of that little bit of new stencil and now another layer of blueberry wash to even out this effect on the top. Looking pretty cool. Now to refresh those pink spray painted hinges with a little gold Rust-Oleum. And finally, time to start sealing. I am using Dixie Belle's top coat in flat along with my Zebra Palm Pro brush. 
You don't want to use Gator High directly over transfers, but I believe you could add it over that first top coat if you wanted a uh, harder surface. I love that transfer of Alice at the tea party. She looks thoroughly ticked off, which is so cool. So yes, some of the paint that we used is Silk All-in-One, which has that top coat in it, but I wanted that finish to be nice and consistent, so I just covered everything with that top coat. By the way, that dark blue, deep sea, that is one of the most gorgeous dark blues I have seen. Kudos, Dixie Belle. Love that color. Here you can really see how great it is to get down and look at your top coating at an angle. Really, really helpful. Okay, time to put those hinges back on and the front lock piece. Now it is time for a quick bit of surgery. I took off that little top piece of the lock and then using some small pliers, bent back that little piece there so that I could remove that locking tongue piece. Then I bent that little piece back with the pliers and put that cover piece back on so that it looked nice aesthetically, but it will no longer be any kind of safety hazard. If the future owner would like to have a functioning lock, I believe they can order one from the Lane Company. One last thing, I think that the lock for Alice's magical key should be a bit gilded, don't you? Okay. Do you remember our blotchy and busted, horrible Horta recalled and really ugly cedar chest? And here she is now. Would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't much care where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. So long as I get somewhere, Alice added as an explanation. Oh, you're sure to do that, said the cat, if you only walk long enough. No longer blotchy, our refreshed friend is a magical blend of blues and the iconically imaginative illustrations of the original tale. Our journey to somewhere filled with missteps seems to have brought us someplace wonderful. So how much did this journey to somewhere cost me? Well, the lane chest of course was free. The amount of paint, primer, and top coat I used came out to right about $30. The transfer was my single most expensive element at $28. Throw in another $5 for a few extras, and that brings my total out-of-pocket cost to $65. So how long did this journey take me? Well, about eight hours. But of course, I suppose that's not all that surprising when you are struggling with your process, change directions in the middle, and a good two hours of that time was just the transfer application. And the majority of that time was the decision-making process. Where, where to put them? <laughs> So what will I list it for? Well, anytime I do a piece where a good chunk of the time I chalk up to learning, I shave that off from the time that I would charge for. So I feel like a fair amount of time to monetize for this piece is about five hours. If I value my time at $40 an hour, that puts my list price right at 
$265. And will I be blending again? Absolutely! But next time I will make sure to have the right paint in the right colors. Also maybe a better blending brush on a flatter surface. Yeah. Yeah, all of those things. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends, on this windy and bendy adventure. I hope you feel encouraged to launch off on one of your own. Remember, you're sure to get somewhere if only you walk long enough. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables. I'm looking at my project that I'm working on for this week and uh, I'm shaking my head at myself and laughing and wondering what <laughs> what am I thinking? Okay, so here's the thing. It's technique and I'm breaking two huge rules. <laughs> I think there's still a good story in here, but uh, Oh! <laughs>